I'm sorry, Roy. You never fail to put yourself under pressure at Palace. As after a 3-1 defeat to Chelsea, is there a way out for this for Roy Hodgson, who has Palace fighting relegation in the Premier League? like always. It's getting repetitive now for Roy in London, wherever he goes really, not just Palace, but Watford as well. He's failed a couple of times, so today we rebuild that Crystal Palace team only using Roy's favourites, players from London, or playing for a London club. And do you guys want kits like this one, this one, or even this one. If you do, make sure to check out Soccer Deal Shop, link in the description. Cheap and affordable replica kits, and if you use MWS in the promo code checkout, you get yourselves 10% off. As yes, this will be a challenge, but we're already in the Premier League with a 42 million budget for old Roy Hodgson himself to use. I'm very excited as well, very excited, and I am going to transfer list everybody who hasn't come from either a London club before, or there and thereabouts, the likes of Elise. I'm going to keep him around. He is on the borderline, but we want to use him. Of course, main player at the club, Eze, came from QPR, so he's sticking with Palace. As this is the transfer list we have to show you to start off this save with, and I've got to tell you, this is going to be a challenge. There is a lot of players at the club which are just not from the capital. The likes of Rob Holding, Dean Henderson, of course. We've got Ferguson. I really thought... Rob Holding would be London based. It isn't where he's born though, as this is the team that we've had to craft to try and fit them all in. You can see we've got youth players in, and I'm going to make that a rule. The youth players already here. We don't have to get rid of. We've got to build somehow. As Dean Henderson as well, I think he's the only player in the starting 11 not London based. I think Hughes might be on the end. I think he's a little bit away. Same with Tompkins, but they're closer than the rest. As one thing that'll be crucial for Roy, which I've already alluded to, is the academy, which we're going to start now. As we've got to use this, we've got to get these players out on loan, if not in the first team. As our best players are Zachary Thorne, we've got Frederick Simmons, we've got Stanley Jeffrey. All good potential wise, but unfortunately for me, and for of course Roy, they're not going to save us. From a relegation at this point. We need to get spending. We also need to get selling because that 42 million can definitely rise. And our first signing, it's going to be difficult to make them, but we've gone to a rival. The weakest player in the team was 57 rated midfielder, so Mohamed El Nenny. This is the man I forgot the name of, Wells Morrison. He can go on the bench. El Nenny goes in as it's a tactical save this as well with the signings. We're not just signing for ourselves. Hear me out here. We're trying to weaken rivals as we've stole Brentford's keeper Mark Flecken. A good one to get because they'll be fighting against relegation like us as Jeremy Nagakia. He comes in to replace the elderly Klein as actually he's better than Henderson. And I don't know if Flecken is really great in real life. I've seen him on and off as Klein's going to stay in just head of Nagakia for now unless we sell him because we're doing a lot of selling but you know the positions we need goal scorer and centre back as we're still selling to get some more money in. Buy you out the door, four million, but add all these millions together and you've got yourself some money as this is the centre back I wanted from the start, Nathan Collins. Yes, I think he's a little bit underused by Brentford as this man's definitely underused by the Gunners. Welcome for less than 10 million, our new number nine, Eddie Nketia has joined the Eagles. All these transfers as well in season number one have come at the expense of players leaving though. As we're out of money now, and this is the team that we've managed to build, I mean, it's okay. Bench is very weak, but one thing we can say, apart from Dean Henderson, everyone is London based. In the squad anyway, as we've got a first game here, Chef United, we need to get off to a good start. It's not going to be easy as I'm trying to see up and judge if any of them players are from London. I'm not really sure to be fair. And of course we know there is a lot of players not from London still in our reserves. They will still probably get played as we win the first game anyway with our London squad. And I don't mind the reserves, you know, coming into the lineup when we're simming through the season until they are sold. As now we've got more a chance to sell them as we are halfway through our first season in the Prem. And how are Palace doing? Because all we're getting shown is round three of the FA Cup. Don't care much for that just yet as we are seventh in the Premier League. Yes, there's Villa, United and Chelsea behind us, but there is a five point gap 
over the villains. That's absolutely brilliant. As though in the Carabao that isn't, we were beaten by Cardiff. What is going on there? And that is a horrific Welsh accent. As you can see, our team is right there. Diverting your attention back onto the players. I mean, it's good. I mean, El Nenny still isn't playing, but I am liking this. You can see as well, Flecken is not getting picked over Dean Henderson for some reason. Don't like that, but I do like our defense. I mean, Klein, once he's out, we're quite strong at the back. Goal scoring as well. I mean, Eze's highest rated, and we're going to see right now who got the most. Him, of course. Who else but Eberneche Eze? with 13 goals and it's also worth mentioning we sold a lot of players and one pre-contract going to the rivals of brighton don't like that Riederveld, as we've got 36 million and that my friends is going to get spent as here we go we're going to spend that money as i really want to finish in the top seven conference league would be exceptional for our first season as brian hill or should i say brian beetle Literally looks like one of the members of the band. As he won't be alone on joining from Tottenham as Pape Matassa is a good one. And them two should have brought quality. But at the end of first season, we are 11th. Not a great start to our Premier League fortunes. Or fortunes, I hope. Please let there be fortune. You can see other teams, though, did finish below us. West Ham, Luton, Brentford relegated. Surely we can go ahead and steal more of their players, as in the FA Cup, beaten by Leeds. They might be joining us next year. You never know, as this team is getting there. I mean, there's a lot of good ratings, actually, after one season. And Nagakia, you can see... I've put in the team. And season number two, we've got to see our money. Unfortunately, we didn't get any European football. But I'm proud of the season overall. And hey, we've got an increase. 51 million. Plus, we still have players to sell. And they're good players to sell, actually. The likes of Lerma, Johnston. They're like 5 million each alongside Dean Henderson and Ducore. Big money. As it goes without saying as well, we've got to look back at the CPFC Academy. We've got some good players now coming through, including 260 rated, who we can promote straight away. As team-wise, we've got some internationals now, and like I said, Nangakia probably could use replacing. He could sit on the bench and we could get a stronger player at right back. The bench is fine. Maybe a striker to add to that. But I want to see some of these young players right here. These are the ones here that went out on loan. And Jeffrey probably the only decent one. As here is the first signing. We're selling Ducore and Dean Henderson. So we need a midfielder in. I'm not too sure on another goalkeeper though. As Sambi Laconga. Welcome back to Palace. Had to go get the man who's done the tour of London. Arsenal, Palace, Luton, Palace again. As he needs a friend to come with him though, we can't sign two Tottenham players, then not two Arsenal. Gotta try and balance it out, as we did of course sign Nketiah, I'm aware. But Takiro Tomiyasu, that's the right back we needed to push for Europe as 35 million and we can just sign anyone. Of course they've got to be in London or play for a London club, but we don't need a particular position, just a world class player as what i've got and done is gone on a bit of a tour of london visit some different clubs we're not just signing from north london derby teams miles laban of course not called noah as i used to call him he's in as a third choice but as a second choice rodrigo muniz from the cottage a brilliant player but after this i bet you're bored of seeing players walk in this is the final one to try and get this european show on the road we've got another center back and it's wesley fofana who's failed at Chelsea. As this is a brilliant team, and looking at it, I didn't expect us to get one this good. We haven't even sold Eze and Elise, by the way. Both of them are still here. As this is exciting. Never been as pumped as Chelsea, though. A tester. We need to become the Crystal Palace of old as Oh, dear. I mean, Elise, he gets a goal, but Caicedo and Sterling, them two players... Kill off the game for Palace. A defeat in the opening game, but we are still competing. And that's what I want to do in terms of fighting for Europe. As how's Woy's new Crystal Plowish doing right now? I mean, it is only 12. I mean, I thought we'd improved. We're kind of a couple of points off. And Man United, they're still in 10th. Are we the lowest London club? We're not, though, because thankfully Luton, bottom of the league. They're propping us up. As Everton in the cup, did that rhyme? 
I think it almost did. And Carabao Cup, we're not through there as well. And to be fair, QPR have gone through Eze's old team. He will be fuming that we haven't improved without him, as that team is... It's good enough on paper. Come on. I mean, we haven't got improvements that I really wanted out of Gil and out of Papasa. I mean, when you compare it to Zinketia, who's 82 rated, I know he's a striker, but he's doing his job. And this is bittersweet because I know for a fact this season hasn't gone the best. But last time I checked, Luton was our final game and there was a game after that, a 2-0 win against Chelsea. That's right, I don't believe it. Crystal Palace... FA Cup winners. It's a trophy in the cabinet, as there isn't a trophy in the cabinet in the league. In fact, nowhere near 11. Fulham above us, and we've just stopped one of their strikers. Plenty of work to be done for Crystal Palace. And for Roy Hodgson as Carabao Cup winners as Leicester. Oh my. Shows if we get further, we could have done a double. Would not have minded that as the team as well. It's coming along and oh no. Ebi always been put in the team. I don't know why over Raksaki, but that means Elise is gone. I mean, we've still got Eze. Sweet, sweet Eze. And the team is growing slowly but surely. Goal scorers in Nketiah this season and Ebreche himself with Brian Hill trying to join in. Don't mind that as players out on loan. We've, okay, we've got some good ones. Caleb Cook. Carlisle, when we send you players, you do not disappoint. As also Tyler Pierce and Stanley Jeffery. Some brilliant stuff happening. Maybe European football with the FA Cup, but as you can see, Mikel Elise has gone to Wolves. It'll add 50 million to the bank, but a big gap to fill. And 94. 94. No, I'm not talking about the age of Roy Hodgson. I'm talking about the budget. That's come from the Elise money, and we know that we have to get more players on the wavelength of Eze. Especially if we're in Europe, as looking at the team. I do like Raksaki. Of course, Crystal Palace through and through. So maybe we go central midfielder. Lakonga on the bench and Flecken. Is it time for a new keeper? There'll be some good backups about as players out on loan. Oh yeah, I did send the players out on loan halfway through the season. And I don't think we'll get anything better through the academy this year. So when they come back, we might play them. Saves us some money as we need to save money as well because the contracts are dire. And in terms of quality, this man's on Eze's level, but... Not attacking wise. To sit just in front of the defense, João Paulinha and this man hopefully does business in Europe. Wanted by Bayern, wanted by Fulham to stay, 50 million, big chunk of the budget. And he's gonna be joined as well by a superstar. Of course, Brentford relegated, will continue stealing. As here he is, 27 million, Brian Umbuemo, the absolute god. Well, to be fair, I think he can be hit and miss and this team right now needs a formation switch. As here we go, wingers now in the formation, helping out Nketiah and same with Eze moving forward. As we lost in the community shield, but we start the season off with Leeds. And I am goddamn excited. Hopefully this year we can beat them as looking at their squad, no one sticks out from time in London. We just gotta use the 87 rated Eze now. Polina in the middle. This team's got quality. Just needs to show as first game, I don't believe it. Eze even missed a penalty. Brian Hill with the goal as Rutter and Aronson just spoil our parade. Our FA Cup parade, that is, and our Carabao Cup when they put an end to it. But they won't put an end to our European tour with Ghent, Besiktas and Shelbourne, all the teams that Palace have drawn right here. And I'm very excited. Can Palace go on a run or can Roy Hodgson win the whole competition. And we'll see to that in a minute, as the first thing we'll see to is dethroning West Ham. They're the outsiders from London in third place, but still, to be fair, we're seventh. Six points off chasing up with them. As you can see, Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup. That will be a challenge. Nice little one as well, as Mansfield Town. Well done to the Stags. Carabao Cup semi-final. As I'm sure they made the quarters in real life. As you can see, Europa League, very good. Avoided that pesky 
That pesky preliminary round. It's so pesky, I even struggle to say the name of it. As team-wise as well, this formation change worked wonders as look at the squad. Training drills are on as looking at the team. It's the Champions League push on. I am hopeful. I mean, we've got scorers in Nketiah and Eze as well. And Brian Umbuemo now beating Hill. That is looking good. And Caleb Cook's looking good. The only problem is... Raksaki on the bench. Two brilliant players. The Stanley Jeffery as well. We've got some youngsters coming through. It's just getting them game time. An end of Roy Hodgson's era. Or not the era, should I say. Season number three. And look at that. Manager of the month for the Owl. Or, sorry, I mean Roy Hodgson. As let's see if he got any trophies. Any hands on anything in the Prem. We finished seventh. Oh, my days as well. Three points off it. That is damaging. We were so close. But hey, I'll take that. Back-to-back -back FA Cups. That, of course, means Europa League football again if it wasn't guaranteed through the league. And, oh, Mansfield. Letting League 2 down and losing to Fulham as overall they lost to the Gunners. We've got some of their good players, of course, as we've got some good form in the Europa League. Add that trophy to the cabinet as we beat Juventus. And let's have a look how we got there. I mean, semi-finals PSV. I think we should win that game. Also, Sevilla, I mean, we did all right there. It was really the round of 16, which was the big scalp as we beat Arsenal 5-2 on aggregate. Emirates JSA, the best in the squad as well. You don't understand how happy that truly makes me. Brilliant third season, and if I'm not wrong, going into season number four, we've got three trophies in the bag. We're cooking with gas as 77 million. That is a good sum of money in our bank account. Not as much as last season. And as you can see, 90 rated as a now contract expiring. I'm doing these contracts before any players are signed because if I don't, we could be losing our best. In the Champions League, we can't lose that man as the only man we're losing is the old Will Hughes. He'll be cursing up a storm with that. As you can see, it takes us a lot of money down, but one quality player hopefully in. And here's the man we sign in. Cut straight to his picture. I don't want you to find out who it is yet. It's probably the man on every team's hit list, Aaron Ramsdale, who's not getting his chance anymore. At Arsenal. Just like Flecken took Raya's spot. In the end, it is Ramsdale who takes Flecken's spot. It's gone full circle. As that is the team now. I mean, you can't see some of the ratings that goes into the Champions League. Only one signing. I mean, as well, at the moment, with Crystal Palace, there's a lot circulating about the owners. Chris Parrish not putting enough money in. But can his new team beat Forrest, who... I've put more than enough money in. A bit too much, causing some problems. There's no problems here for the mighty Crystal Palace. Eze Nketiah and Brian Umbuemo. All the London lads come together. That is a good job done as into the Champions League we go with a group we should win, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, nothing's guaranteed. The Champions League still not guaranteed. As we're in sixth place still. Palace can't break that barrier and just go above the crystal ceiling and get into the top four. Absolutely shameful. Still, we've got cup games and Akrit and Stanley. Who are they? Joking, of course, as we're in the Carabao Cup semi-finals. Brentford in there. And we've stole all their players. A great revival story as a great Champions League story. Crystal Palace without a draw or defeat. Clean sweep in there, but still we don't get the look. We've got Dortmund to beat in the round of 16. So here we go. Let's put it to the test how good we've got. Dortmund away at the Signa Iduna. This will be an incredible game. Polinia suspended and after one game, we're behind. And surely we can't be crashing out first round. I don't believe it. We've got hammered Crystal Palace. I mean, when you bring a hammer to a palace, it's only going one way. With Branton Alvarez grabbing the goals, it's another underwhelming season for Roy. And I mean, at least come end of the season, we did get in the top four, but at a cost, I mean... We should have wrapped the Champions League up. Never mind be challenging for it again as Chelsea and Newcastle. The FA Cup is not ours. Manchester United, round of 16, or quarterfinals actually. They defeat us. I'm feeling defeated as Spurs win the Carabao. No trophy there. Who won the Champions League? In the end, it is Milan and Real Madrid who meet in the final 
somewhere. As it's not every day as well, you get to say to yourself, you've got an 86 rated goalkeeper on the bench. Never mind who played in that game. We should have won against Dortmund and to be beaten for one? Absolutely outrageous as look at the team. We've got a 90 rated Eddie and Ketia. Shows you what good support can do for a man's rating. And of course, top scorer. Eberichese. Love that from him. Love this from the team. Although we didn't win the Champions League, we're still in it. And as I wonder who we'll get, I'm wondering which player we'll get as well because Saar's not improving. He's the only one as well. It looks like everyone else is slowly but surely creeping up, leaving him behind. And £189 million pounds as well to go and just get one replacement. This is going to be fun. Same with contracts every single year. We lose more players. As I think whatever happens this year, we'll try sell Mark Flecken because he is too good to have on the bench. As here's the big player stealing from a London rival to make sure we get in the Champions League again. Enzo Fernandez from Chelsea. Almost 100 million for a quality player. Of course, I ain't gonna forget about the goal he just scored against Palace on Monday. Phenomenal. Sent the defenders round as a man who gets sent a lot. Sorry, Kepper, but you actually do. He's gonna be the new backup coming in for Flecken as our final signing, a backup striker. Welcome to the club, Armando Broja, of course, getting passed around a lot himself. Dubbed not good enough for Chelsea at the moment, but definitely good enough for that Palace bench, as we're good enough as well in the squad right now to challenge for more silverware. And Leeds United to test that theory, Premier League win? Maybe it's pending. We've had a brilliant save, and Roy Hodgson keeps getting saved by that little man, Eze. And man, that guy is good. We had him at Blackburn, as look at that. He's got us sat top of the table. Yes, only four games, and it's not that table we want to be top of. It's that one right there. And I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Will we get past sixth place before halfway through? It's getting silly now as 19 games gone. And when 19 games are gone, Palace are sixth. I mean, I think they'd take it in real life as Villa in the FA Cup. Okay, we, we could put up a challenge. Is there a challenge in the Carabao? No, there's not. But another League One shock this time, Northampton. Doing the EFL well as we're doing England well. We've got PSV. As we didn't top the group, we only finished second. But second, we were comfortably over Villarreal. And I'm just desperate to get into this first game. I don't even need to look at the team. I think we should get past PSV. But just out of intriguement, look at that. It's still unhappy despite where we are. In the Champions League, that is. Of course, Premier League, I agree. They've got a point to be disappointed as 2-0 up at home. Great stuff is that. I'm not feeling any pressure going over to Holland and to be fair a 2-2. I'm not overly convinced with that and Arsenal next. We have to be better to beat the Gunners. Of course was a 5-0 in real life when these two teams met but this time it's Palace's game. It's Nketiah with the first goal, Brian with the second and Mika gets one for them at Selhurst Park. And it's fitting as well. I never thought to mention that we've got a London derby in the Champions League when we're only signing London players, Brian Umbuemo from Brentford to Palace. And our semi-final, we meet Juventus who did top us in the group stages. But that doesn't count for anything once you're in knockout games, as you can see. Umbuemo and Nketiah. Love that pairing, as love that last result. Bruno missing a pen. Palace through to the final. Great football, as we are guaranteed to meet someone from Italy. Beating an Italian team to get an Italian team, as we don't even finish sixth. We finish ninth, ninth in the Premier League. At least we're not the worst London-based club, and I guess that'll do. We're the team in the final after all, as you can see, Wolves and Brighton in the FA Cup final. Good going for them. Hull made the semi, the team we rebuilt last time, and I never checked, but Northampton beat us in the quarters. That is shameful, honestly shameful, as we know our journey to the Champions League, of course. I do want to see, though, the squad that looks like that, and it's good enough 
to beat Inter. Here we go, Olympus Stadion. I'm starting to pick up on stadiums now. I actually know where we are and I know where we stand. We've got a great team, but a great team in front of us. Come on, lads, find a way through. Here's Eberich Chiesa on the mark. Jao Paulini, and we've got a very unhappy team. That is worth saying, so it's going to be hard to motivate the boys. An early goal here wouldn't go amiss as Eddie and Ketia testing Jordan Pickford. What is with this game? Having Pickford go to Serie A every save as here is Brian. Brian Hill. I've just noticed we've got two Brians, one on either wing as that is a shot at Bastoni's face. And Darwin Nunes here after that ball that Brian Hill should have got onto. They miss a chance. This game's not settling. Don't know what it is about it, but we've got to try and go on a charge. Tyreek Mitchell through to Nketiah. Nketiah. Maybe if he could find an option to shoot. He doesn't, you know. He's a player that's not really getting into this one. Being a bit of a passenger as this game is mostly passengers. Martinez now. Some quality chances in this game, but at half time, pretty mid showing overall. Not a bad showing, but not a good one. It's got to be said. So, lads. With the ratings we have, we have to get out there and put on a show for the fans that have travelled. Because I aren't liking this so far. And Darwin Nunes trying to squeeze through. They're looking the better. And now we're in now and we need to get a chance. Brian Hill, this is what we've been waiting for. Cutting inside, tries to find an Arsenal ex-teammate. It's Eddie and Ketia across to Embuemo. Who should have scored? It was Spurs to Arsenal to Brentford to miss it. Gotta take the chance and got to score it if we get it. Still though, Brian Mbwemo making one this time himself and that fell for Eze. If he would have got on the end of it, maybe we would have had something. Still we might anyway as Tyreek Mitchell in at the near post. Does find Nketiah, put that over the defence. Just still not dropping for us though. And Mbwemo, this is better. Enzo Fernandez, Eddie Nketiah with 10 minutes on the clock. It is Eddie Nketiah. Brian Hill needs to get there. Does get there. And the rejected Beetle gets the goal. Honestly, look at the bob on his hair. And look at him bob up there at the back stick. To tap it past Jordan Pickford. And the man who looks like Zac Efron out of the Iron Claw. New movie has us 1-0 ahead. Honestly recommend that film if you've not seen it already as Nketi is in the mood now getting the ball and Enzo Fernandez. Bad switch from him, just four minutes to see it out though. Come on lads though, we can see it out and I don't like that we're passing it round the back at the moment. Get it forward as Eze tries to spin his man, gives it into Hill again. If we go for a shot and it was a dipping one, the whistle should have gone and Palace have done it. Get in there lads, I went for for a kick close to, of course, blue and red. Trying to get in the mood. Don't like the fact we're not in the home kit, but I don't care. Either way, Roy Hodgson has done it with Palace. As, of course, an original lifting the trophy as well. It's going to be Mark Gurhi with the armband. Of course, an ex-London signing from Chelsea as he does it in the white and cyan. Is it cyan? Is it turquoise? I don't care what colour the weird car seat belt is. But Crystal Palace have done it under Roy. And if you want to see your team rebuilt just like this would, let me know in the comments below. Let me see it, of course. And I will try and get round to it to rebuild it shortly.